Known as the energy carrier, hydrogen is the lightest, odorless and colorless gas found in nature. It is a component of water and almost all living organisms. It is indeed one of the most ubiquitous chemical substances in the universe. Some scientists believe that hydrogen should be made from renewable resources, like algae. As a result, will have the potential to have no adverse effects on the planet. However, there are many hurdles to the use of hydrogen. The molecular structure of hydrogen is very simple. It contains two protons and two electrons. I am Carla Stevenson. Today, we have with us Dr. David Lambert who will talk about this priceless element. For sure, the history of hydrogen has been a roller coaster. It went through several cycles of illusion and disillusionment. We believe that it's going to be a major factor in long term plans for renewable energy. So, Henry Cavendish was the first to identify hydrogen as a distinct element. He thought that the gas was made by mixturing metal and acid. More precisely, this scientist took particles of zinc that he then mixed with hydrochloric acid. After that, the solution began to bubble, generating a gas that he called flammable air, and this is what we call now, hydrogen. Later, he found that water was composed by hydrogen and oxygen and he discovered that if hydrogen is burnt in the air, it produces water. Antoine Lavoisier gave this element the name, hydrogen. He identified hydrogen as a gas and measured its heat of combustion. He also discovered that hydrogen can be stored in a liquefied form. Hydrogen is among the most common substances in the Big Bang. It's found in metals and feedstock for industrial processing. Natural hydrogen accumulations have been reported in a variety of geological environments. They may occur in shallow topographic depressions or as subcircular surface features. They are thought to be long-lived, dynamic systems, and they may be similar to conductive geothermal systems, or they may be different from static oil and gas fields. Many naturally occurring hydrogen systems have been observed on the ocean floor. These include natural seeps, halite deposits, and potassium-rich evaporites. These have been associated with diffuse and serpentinized ophiolitic complexes and have been associated with mid-ocean ridges. These geological systems are also capable of hosting diverse microbial communities. Some of these communities are able to use the hydrogen produced in these areas to produce methane. The natural cycle of hydrogen is poorly understood. This may be partly explained by the inadequate amount of focus that has been spent on hydrogen science. Nevertheless, the existence of natural hydrogen accumulations in the Earth's crust is of great interest to microbiologists. Several mechanisms to produce hydrogen in the subsurface have been proposed. Some of these methods include radiolysis of water, the biological aromatization of oil, and the thermal degradation of organic matter. This element has many many applications and each time it is getting much important for economy of our countries. Dr. David. Tell us where hydrogen is used for. Hydrogen has a big impact on several sectors, such as the transportation, building and manufacturing industries. It plays a major role in the glass industry and it is used in food processing. It is also used to produce methanol or ammonia, which represents a key ingredient in many types of fertilizers. Hydrogen is used in industry for hydrogenation of unsaturated substrates and used as a primary raw material by the chemical industry for many generations. It is widely used in petrochemicals, as a refining process, and in metal alloying. Using hydrogen as a fuel can be a viable alternative to gasoline and even it could be used as a rocket fuel when mixed with oxygen. Some countries have invested in hydrogen as an alternative fuel source like Japan. Japanese authorities had a goal of having 5 million hydrogen fuel cell vehicles on the roads by the year 2023. They will spend hundreds of millions of dollars on research each year. The first hydrogen fueling station in Europe opened in Hamburg, Germany, in February 1999. During the first half of the 20th century, scientists and engineers in Europe tested hydrogen as a fuel. They converted several types of vehicles to run on hydrogen. It was a small step forward, but the hydrogen industry has only really begun to take off in the past few years. 
Something sure is that hydrogen sector is poised to become a major player in the global effort to reduce carbon emissions and get on green economies. However, it is crucial that governments work together to develop a clean hydrogen supply chain that does not inhibit investment.